uh, I'm Neeta Pandey, I'm from uh, Data Team Center. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is DTU on Hadoop. Uh, we are building a solution which is primarily uh, DTU for entity resolution. And uh, in my talk, again, I'm going to start the talk after the uh, 15 minutes talk. I'm going to share some experiences of uh, building this particular uh, solution uh, on Hadoop. So, uh, I'll just spend some two or three minutes uh, setting the context here in terms of what uh, is this DD all about. Uh, we all have uh, heard about master data management. In all organizations, it exists in some uh, shape or form. And uh, if I really have to define it in a very simple way, uh, the data that is really critical for the organization, the customer data is, of course, but other types of data like the product data or uh, uh, campaign data. So since the data is very critical for the organization and it comes from various different source, you would uh, cleanse it, uh, standardize it, normalize uh, it. You would find dupes in it and in this, this dupe may not be really uh, uh, the uh, matches based on value or even uh, close uh, values, it could be from linkages, etc. But get all these entities together to try to find uh, dupes in the data and ultimately provide that critical data as like a master list which everybody in the organization can access. Uh, customer uh, MDM or the customer entities are the most common form. And here also I'm going to talk about primarily the customer entities or profiles that we can standardize and make it available for a lot of applications across the uh, organization. So, uh, coming to why is it like a, uh, I, one thing we would see that we didn't hear about DDU for uh, it for a long time. It was very common uh, to just buy an external solution like uh, we have IBM Initiate or Informatica, DQ, uh, Informatica uh, Master Data Management or SAP DKM, it was very common to just get this uh, tools off the shelf, configure and use it. But there have been some scenarios which uh, have triggered in-house development. Uh, I do have those experiences or those scenarios from a few technical groups on this. And I do see uh, such kind of scenarios happening in many other organizations also where we already have an MDM system but may not uh, really suffice. Uh, in-house uh, build solution. So, uh, taking a Duke example again, uh, we do have a customer MDM built in, uh, uh, built using IBM uh, Initiate, and it's been there for some time. But what triggered uh, this was uh, definitely the uh, the customer data that we uh, were thinking of earlier has now, for the analytical requirement, uh, the scope has definitely increased. We just do not want to look at uh, the paid users who would have done some important uh, transactions with us, but also want to look at uh, visitors, uh, uh, subscribers, free trialers, uh, different type of subscribers. So those are the analytical uh, requirements today. Also, we just don't want to at times look at our customers, but uh, taking into this example again, most of uh, customers are individuals and small business. Uh, for many of the innovation uh, projects wherein we experiment with data, we would even want to master uh, customers, customer, customers, employees, uh, or even individuals, accountants. So everybody in the ecosystem, we would rather want to master data at that level so that it doesn't help just the analytical uh, requirements but also uh, different offerings. And, uh, uh, when it comes to enrichment of the data, today we have a lot of social data. So even if we know our customers partially, from some of the data we have, there's a lot of data available uh, on the, uh, or a lot of social data available today. So with all this, the scale of data is definitely increasing. The traditional MDM solutions are really at a, uh, uh, since they are first is RDBM is based, and the license costs are based on the number of records that you process and master. The 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 cost definitely skyrockets uh, here if you go for the traditional solution. The second requirement uh, that we saw was real time. Uh, earlier we would use the MDM data for some marketing use cases, some uh, use cases, but today the requirements that are coming in are uh, can we use this master data 
uh, while uh, or, uh, uh, while the customer is online, use it for the uh, for better recommendation. Also, uh, instead of getting this data at the back end and then doing uh, the deduce, is it possible as and when we capture the data, we do a deduce standardization, etc. So those are the real time requirements that we are seeing. So though we have not completely got into the uh, 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 or catering to the real time requirements, we are definitely building the solution, keeping uh, these in mind. And uh, last is also that all the uh, data uh, for most of the enterprises, like we see it also, we have a data hub wherein we are getting data from all the different offerings in one place, and that is HDSL. So when you have the data in Hadoop, many of the times it makes sense to build these kind of solutions on top of Hadoop. Uh, as opposed to the uh, traditional uh, solutions which you have on the RDBS uh, side. So some of the solutions have uh, support for Hadoop, but they are not completely. So with that uh, trigger, uh, we uh, did start with uh, development of an in-house uh, tool, which was about, uh, uh, about a year back. Uh, so if you, if you look at the different components in this, one is you would collect the data from different sources. The first step that you would do is cleanse and standardize the data. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, the better you standardize, uh, the better your next steps that is matching and meeting will be. The next step is matching, which is every profile uh, or entity that you get, you would look against the master, try to match it and see if that entity exists. And uh, if that entity exists, then the next step is to create or uh, reconcile it or to create some kind of a golden uh, uh, record. The reason it's called a golden record is it's built from multiple sources and uh, beyond that point it becomes like a source of truth for that particular entity which would be used by several applications or again backed by the office. So once the data is uh, available, you would uh, you would finally store it in the uh, uh, in some store which would be used for various purposes. The typical use cases are, uh, as I mentioned, one is real time when the offerings can just look up uh, whether the enti uh, we whether the profile exists and they know anything about that particular entity. Second is the interactive exploration wherein the analyst would take the data, join it to other datasets, and the downstream applications that would pull data in patch, which are also very uh, simple. Uh, coming to uh, how, uh, so these are the different components and how did we solve it in uh, Hadoop? Uh, uh, definitely for the entire pipeline, the batch pipeline, we used FIG. Uh, we built different components, uh, uh, all of them custom. The cleansing and standardization, uh, we used a lot of open source uh, NLP libraries, the phone libraries, the email validation, etc. But ultimately, we built a uh, standardization library and a recognizer uh, which would recognize what entity it is. Since this is a, uh, uh, this is a customer uh, uh, cu customer profiles dedupe, a lot of these cleansing libraries were PII uh, which was uh, 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 which was phone, email addresses, etc. So uh, as I mentioned, we need this in real time as well as we need this in batch. So we built these libraries, created UDS so that PIG uh, can uh, pick would be able to call it, and at the same time also uh, hosted it uh, for real time so that offerings which would want to start using it can discover uh, it. Uh, second, coming to the matching, which is the core part of uh, this particular application, uh, matching was uh, definitely since it's a core, you would want to build most accurate one, you would want a scalable one, you would want it to be performant. But since it's a core part, till you have this out, you're not going to have the entire pipeline. So in order to take a lean approach, we did build a simple probabilistic based matching, uh, wherein we would take uh, different weights uh, of attributes, uh, or we would assume those attributes based on uh, heuristic. So there is an attribute matching for each of the profiles, and then there is an aggregate uh, profile uh, matching. The thing that I wanted to mention here is that we started simple so that it got us going, but at the same time we wanted to keep room for uh, more sophisticated algorithms, at least uh, the, clust uh, the clustering uh, techniques that can be used to come up with uh, unique profiles, uh, 
uh, using let's say mahot or any other libraries but uh, uh, but at this point in time if we do that it would be a long implementation cycle so we built a matching framework in a way wherein for the attributes or for the profile uh, the algorithm can be uh, can be added later and uh, the framework can be configured to take those algorithm uh, this helped us to even separate the matching framework data engineering from the sciences part and though we have uh, got uh, got an algorithm in place which is uh, good to start with we have to for the use of sophisticated algorithms also uh, again your uh, same approach uh, pick uh, would be calling the uh, library because uh, pick, pick would be running the overall data pipeline um, after we master we store the data in uh, edge base the master data is stored in edge base uh, what helps uh the features of edge base that helped us there was since the profiles are brought from several different uh, sources it has wide set of attributes but at the same time it gets sparse so uh edge base helped us there also since it's pii uh, we need to update it uh, so the versioning helps us there also since uh, it's edge base we can uh, make use of range scans wherein we are comparing single attribute to a set of attributes so the rocky design we did it in such a way so that the relevant attribute uh, or the relevant profiles are together and we would be able to do the range scan so once the uh, since the data master data is finally stored in uh, edge base what helped us here again is the pig interoperability with uh, edge base wherein uh, 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 wherein the Uh, not only pick is able to look up but able to use h file for storing the uh, data directly uh, then once the data is stored in h base what we are uh, uh, one is the real time use case uh, which can be solved by using solar on top of h base that is uh, what we still uh, have to uh, build but on the batch side and the interactive exploration side we are using a uh, high external table to h uh, base in order to uh, uh, so that the analyst or downstream application are able to extract this data join it to other data sets and then uh, proceed with their search uh this is a little bit more on the matching techniques definitely we want to use the clustering algorithm mahout is one of the options we uh, tried out we also tried out uh, mnd uh, mainly if we go for spark but the whole idea there is the, it expects vectorization and it is very uh, costly at this point in time to do uh, term frequency uh, uh, or to use term frequency for vectorization etc so we are also looking at some options where we would be able to uh, uh, able to do clustering directly through based on text but that these are all uh, taking time and that's the reason why we use the simple probabilistic algorithm audio which helps us to get started but uh, uh, it's not uh, that scalable or very difficult to generalize the whereas the other approaches would be much more uh, scalable for us in the long run uh yeah so summary yes master data today is used in a lot of different cases uh, uh dedupe is the core of it uh, we can use a lot of different uh, options to solve it i i mentioned simple algorithm versus using mahout or ml or you can use r and then use tmnf to uh, port it but uh, that is something that will keep Uh, evolving what will be used. That's it. Any questions? Uh, yes. Uh, one I can think of is this hierarchical. Like, uh, if if let's say you have a, a parent business and you have multiple business. Other thing is, yes, if. if the algorithm is uh, like as you make your algorithm very accurate you may find some dupes and they might be same but i think you are asking the more of like can they be really linked yes yeah. so we in fact have a column called link id in our uh, in our schema mm-hmm. uh, in edge base wherein if the uh, let's say even uh, there are 100 hun- uh, hundred hundred outlets for a particular merchant then all these hundreds have to be linked to the first merchant so we do have the link uh, 
Okay, really quick, before we move on to the next question, just want to make one quick announcement. Uh, we are going to have another really quick announcement after this speech, so make sure you stick around. Stay here before you go to lunch. We have a really awesome message coming from some of our you know, partners here, so make sure you stick around. And then also, as you are ask, asking your questions, our uh, sponsors over at Bloomreach, they are going to be passing out you know, some of their goodies. Uh, they have the de-stress balls, so I know when you guys get stressed out from all of your hard work, make sure you use them. And a big thanks to our sponsors over at Bloom Reach. And now let's let the questions continue. Hi, uh, this is Gagan from Vidya. So my question is, when you are creating a golden record from two or multiple source records, so how you are uh, handling the incremental updates? Uh, uh, so incremental one, updates for the source. So one is the source precedence. We do take into consideration source precedence also. Because some of the sources are uh, more reliable than some of the other sources. The other is the uh, the updated time. Uh, so based on these, uh, so every time it takes like multiple profiles and generates a new uh, master record. But the main thing there is the source precedence. So every attribute has a source precedence and uh, as well as it has the last update. Every time whenever your new batch runs, uh, that will accommodate all of them. Uh, yes. So every time you match, so in this case it's not uh, exactly for every record, right? So every record that has matched and has some data which is not, uh, which is updated after the uh, earlier one has run. So it's an incremental uh, run. So how you are planning to handle real time updates in that case? So. Okay, so the real time update would be the direct uh, API. So today uh, we have APIs to look up. Similarly, we would have APIs that would directly uh, write to edge base so every time you match the the edge base record itself is a uh, input along with the incoming and then you again construct the match so uh, then uh, last point so when how, how will you search that data is, uh, is this your rookie de uh, design uh, accordingly yeah currently we have a rookie design which is used for this batch process but for real time lookups that may not be sufficient that's when we would need to have the uh, solar indexes and APIs on top of it. So later, even the batch ones can be used for it. But right now, we are having a Roki design uh, based very specifically on the uh, geo data, so that the uh, business and entity, uh, business and individuals in the same lo uh, locality are uh, together. So that that's the Roki design. Uh, okay, so we uh, we had we have uh, explored that, but we have not uh, completely built it. So right now, the one we have is a simple probabilistic algorithm, and we are looking uh, towards both of them. Uh, with whatever approach, the main hurdle we have today is the vectorization, and uh, that really is uh, takes a lot of implementation. So beyond that, we can use multiple approaches, but we are not there. Yet. Batch or cleansing? Sorry, can you say you mentioned cleansing, cleansing the data? Yes. So we have both the requirements. One is batch, which is the requirement now, and uh, what is also being uh, asked for is instead of the uh, the raw data entering the backend system, uh, can we have the uh, data validation and standardization done? by the offering uh, when the data is being entered and captured. That would help the end users also and the clean data would enter into the system. So we have just uh, we have just uh, recently had a web, a web so we, we've built a library that is being used in BAT and that same library we had a web service deployment uh, and we just have, uh, so that's like a prototype that we have built and uh, we're looking at can we uh, continue to use that in so as I as I mentioned, we've taken uh, by building it uh, as a library, we have taken care of the fact that we can use it in batch by building. Uh, in this case, since we're using Fig, we are building the UDS, and in real time, we are deploying it as a web. Yeah, we, we have time for one more question. Uh, the the logging uh, one. Okay, so uh, we are having our own uh, for the web services one, and uh, Intuit has a. 
uh, logging standard that we are following and uh, for our batch uh, processes also since this is the etl uh, kind of a framework we have our own etl uh, framework that we uh, wherein we log the data and we do have monitoring framework uh, so but then that's already there for the other etl processes or other web service applications we are just using it um, we have time for one more question and it's going right over there hello um, so you said the data is very sparse. So how is it a challenge for your probabilistic algorithm? Do you have any appreciation recall on that? Yeah, so we do have uh, uh, based on, so one is we have also used the concept of threshold here because uh, uh, the whatever score we get, depending on the use case, people can either choose a, a lower threshold, like marketing they can go with, uh, they need not really, uh, they want more directional data, so they go for lower thresholds, whereas some of the offerings go for higher uh, thresholds. So, uh, based on the different thresholds, we have different precision recall computed. So, we have a test framework uh, with any change to the algorithm, we go ahead and generate that. So, overall, the precision, uh, uh, the pres like if we consider a threshold of somewhere around 0.8, then the precision is somewhere uh, uh, 0.7. But uh, when we are going uh, higher, like 0.9 or so, we are having a higher range. So that is uh, where it is today. Uh, so the overall uh, probabilistic algorithm has given us a okay, acceptable uh, precision or uh, accuracy to uh, get us going. But definitely, uh, that is the first uh, version of it that we have been using. Okay, thanks. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Everybody give a warm round of applause. Thank you.